G'day guys, it's Stas here with another video from Beer Co. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how I go about uh, designing my own recipes from scratch. Now, for some people, this might be quite a daunting task, but I find that I'm hopefully going to give you a couple of tips that will sort of give you some guidance uh, along the ways. And of course, don't, don't forget, uh, it's also totally okay to get inspiration from beers, especially while you're finding your feet. So, um, yeah, without further ado, I'm going to make a, an easy drinking Aussie Pale Ale today, and um, hopefully uh, you might find this process helpful, useful, interesting, insightful. Let's get to it. So before we start diving in and going through the various different types of malts or hops or yeast that we might uh, want to use, I often think it's better to take a step back and think about the overall characteristics of the beer. For example, um, with a pale ale, uh, what color do you want it to be? Do you want it to be really pale? Do you want it to be um, sort of a golden color or a copper color? Um, and do you want it to be hazy? Do you want it to be clear? Do you want it to be malt forward? Do you want it to be hop forward? Do you want it to be a balance? What sort of hops do you want to um, showcase? Do you want sort of tropical fruit, citrusy, earthy, piney, resiny? Um, so think about a descriptor or, or, or like a, a way to describe the beer that you're trying to make in your head before you get lost in, you know, various different types of base malts or hops or things like that. So for this, this pale ale that I'm going to make, I'm going to go uh, something along the lines of uh, pale in colour, uh, something that's uh, reasonably clear, uh, although I'm not too fussed if it's a little bit hazy. Want to be largely hop dominated, hop forward, um, with some tropical fruits, citrus, and maybe a bit of pine or something, something else like that. I'm thinking easy drinking, sessionable, so four and a half percent, four point eight percent, definitely below five. And I want it to be a fairly refreshing drink. I don't want it to be too thick on the mouth feel. I want to finish with a nice clean finish, maybe with a touch of bitterness at the back. So um, yeah, that's that's the kind of picture that I'm aiming for. I should just mention, this process is a lot easier to do with some software. I'm gonna be using Brewfather today. Uh, I also use Beersmith, both are really good uh, programs. There's a lot of other good ones out there as well. So use one that uh, you've already got access to or the one that sort of works best for you and your process. It's all a bit different. Speaking of Brewfather, let's jump over to the program. So here we have uh, Brewfather. This is just my account here. So I'm going to start by going up to a new recipe. Now, whenever I uh, start a new recipe, um, just it's, I find it's easy just to start with the name. We're just going to have an Aussie Pale Ale, and then I'm going to check that my equipment is set correctly. Um, I won't go through how to set up a default equipment. This is my default uh, equipment that I've automatically got it to load and checking my batch volume. Now the next thing um, that I tend to do is go over and um, input a style. Now this isn't a, um, you know, you must keep to the style, but I find it sort of handy to know, you know, if you're kind of in the ballpark, especially if you're sort of new to this, you don't quite know if the amount of bitterness to um, gravity points or alcohol strength, that sort of things. It just sort of um, makes it easier. And it's kind of nice to see as you add things in, how they change uh, the overall estimation of where the beer is going to end up. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to select a style. And I'm going to call, see if I'm going to go Australian Pale Ale. And you know, in this one, you can drop it down and it should tell you the specs for it. Um, but I'm just going to use this and we're about ready to go. So getting back to my descriptor, I want it to be pale in colour. So I'm going to choose some malts that are going to be pale in colour. <laughs> and I want it to be fairly crisp 
and maybe finish with a touch of sweetness just to sort of uh, play a bit with that malt and hop balance. So I'm going to choose um, some, I've got some crisp pilsner, um, crisp pilsner, euro pills. I'm not going to worry too much about the uh, amounts of the ingredients and I'll show you why in a minute. So I'm going to add that and then that's going to be my base malt. So clicking on this plus button adds it in but it doesn't close this uh, fermentables window. And then I'm going to add a touch of Vienna as well. Um, let's go crisp Vienna. And one kilo, sure. So at the moment we've got 50% of each. Now I don't want 50% Vienna, I want mainly pills uh, with a little bit of Vienna just to add a little bit of um, sweetness to the, to the back end of the malt. So up here in the percentage uh, you can click here, I might go, I don't know, 85% crisp pills and 15% Vienna. There we go. So that's now set our percentage. But if you look up here, we're pretty far down on our, um, our OG, our gravity, and therefore our um, ABV. So to fix that, let's adjust or scale this grain bill to an OG. Now, I'm aiming for about 4.7, which I'm gonna guess. Let's go 1.045. Now that's up around 4.9. I'm gonna add in my yeast, which will give me my attenuation. So quickly come down here to the yeast section, add in my USO5. Now, depending on what sort of uh, beer you're choosing, you might choose different yeasts. Um, but for this, I'm just going to do a pale ale. USO5 is fine. Um, so you can see now that it's got the 81% attenuation input in, you can see my ABV went up a little bit because that yeast is going to ferment down fairly aggressively. So I can come back into my OG, uh, my fermentables, and adjust my OG down a little bit so that I'm sitting in that place where I want to be. Let's try 10.04. Okay, so 10, uh, sorry, 10.04, 10.42. Um, 10.42, um, it's estimating that we're going to finish at 10.06, which will give us an ABV of 4.7, which is about right. So now that I'm sort of reasonably happy with my malt bill, uh, let's move on to the hops. Now, potentially counterintuitively, you want to sort of start your hops at the front end of the beer and work backwards. So we don't want to start with our bittering addition. We want to start with our flavor uh, and aroma addition, starting with the dry hop. So this is an Aussie pale ale. I said I wanted tropical fruit and I wanted citrus and I wanted pine. So I think I might choose three great Aussie hops. We're gonna go with Galaxy, Big Secret, and the new, relatively new Eclipse. So let's go into our hops and start putting those in. And in terms of amount of dry hop, uh, it depends how hoppy you like your beers. Um, uh, there's a brewery in New Zealand called Epic. Um, they have a rule which is five grams per litre in uh, pale ales, 10 grams per litre in IPAs, and 15 grams per litre in uh, double IPAs. This is, of course, dry hops. They're obviously on the upper end of the spectrum in terms of dry hop rate. Um, but, you know, I, I tend to think that pale ales should sit anywhere from two uh, grams per litre on the lower end up to about five grams per litre on the upper end uh, being more uh, flavorful. Now it's also useful to talk about dry hops or any hop amounts uh, in terms of grams per litre because then your rate doesn't change as your batch size changes. It's just um, calculated based on your batch size. So let's start with, uh, what's our first one? Let's start with Galaxy. And we're gonna do how many, and uh, with Brewfather, you can either put in an amount or you can put in a grams per liter amount. So 
We're going to go with, I think that's two grams per litre. Yes, two grams per litre is about right. And then we're going to go, oops, I just did that for a 60 minute boil. No matter. Let's edit that. Um, we're going to do a dry hop on day, uh, let's go day five. Save that. Okay, that's better. Now we're going to go, what was the other one, Vic Secret, and another equal dose of that, so we're going to do another 2 grams per litre, uh, not in the boil, we're going to go dry hop, day, whoops, 5, uh, and then Eclipse. We're going to have just a touch of eclipse on the dry hop and we're going to go one gram per litre. So that's there. And now we've got our dry hops in. So this is the dry hop rate that I've chosen and the mix that I've chosen for my, my dry hops. Uh, I'm going to get a little bit of I'm going to get tropical fruit from the galaxy and the eclipse. And Vic Secret's going to give me a little bit of pine, which Eclipse also has a little bit of pine. Now, if you're just starting out, um, you may not know these off the top of your head. I certainly still need to refer to um, descriptors and um, refresh my memory. But this is your beer after all, and just play around with the different uh, amounts that you that you want to achieve the the flavours that you want, and you know have your best guess, brew it, and then assess it. So this is this is my version one of my Australian Pale Ale. Is it going to be perfect? I don't know, but this is, this is my process. Um, next, I'm going to add in my Aroma Hops, uh, which is my Whirlpool. I'm not going to use uh, all three. I think I might just use Galaxy and Eclipse. Um, you can, of course, do whatever you want. So I'm going to go... Eclipse, and we're going to just maybe one gram per litre um, in the Aroma Hop Stand. We're going to do this for 20 minutes, and we'll do Galaxy as well. Uh, one gram per litre at 20 minutes. All right, so you can see now that we've added in a hot addition, a hot hop addition, uh, you can see that uh, Brewfather has calculated uh, the IBU contribution from the Eclipse and the Galaxy. This, of course, if you're getting your own, uh, just double check that your alpha acids um, match what uh, you've got in, in Brewfather. You can adjust them in the alpha acids here and it'll make your um, bitterness calculations more accurate. So it's brought our bitterness, um, our IBU calculation up to 26, which you can see in the style for an Australian style pale ale is pretty much in the middle. Now I wanna push that a little bit more towards the bitter uh, side of the scale because I'm gonna have a little bit of sweetness from the Vienna malt um, so I feel that I, to, to make that beer a balanced beer, I want to sort of push that um, that bitterness and, and make, might make you come back for more. I'm going to add a 60 minute addition to sort of just up the bitterness. And this is why we started at the dry hops and then worked our way back rather than starting with a bittering addition and then trying to scale down our uh, aroma hops to fit within uh, the beer and not make it too bitter. This is a much uh, easy way to do things. So well, let's just use Galaxy seeing as we're already using it. Might be a bit of a waste. You might want to use something like Warrior or something. Um, so I'm aiming for maybe around 37 IBUs. I'm currently at 26. So if I add, um, if as I add a, a gram here, you can see that my calculated IBU addition here, so I'm, I'm basically after 11 IBUs. So I'm just going to go up here until I hit 11 IBUs, which is only 7 grams. 
put that in and there we go we're up at 38 IBUs so that beer is starting to look really well it, it sort of fits in the category does it taste nice that's up for me to decide once I brew it um, but at least I know the beer is going to be at least balanced within the style specs um, so now that I've sort of uh, done this um, might just do a couple of finishing touches um, if I wanted to use if I wanted a clear beer I might do something like add a whirl flock here which will help with the clarity or help the um, the proteins flocculate out after uh, before I put it into the fermenter um, and just checking the uh, mash profile now I'm, I'm not going to have my strike water at uh, 70 and a half degrees that's going to be far too hot um, I know my system I generally do about two to three degrees above um, where I need to be so that I, I basically ignore this value um, mashing at 65 it'll give me a sort of a nice sort of light relatively dry um, finish um, then I'm just going to mash out as I always do um, and then fermentation is going to be 18 degrees and then uh, with a, a diacetyl rest at 21 which is where I'll dry hop and package and everything as, as per normal so that's about it that's, that's my process for um, creating uh, an original recipe from scratch uh, as I said before the, the two biggest um, pieces of advice I can give you is have a concept, a broad concept for the beer in your mind first. Don't start off with malts and hops and yeasts. Have a concept for the beer because that concept will make all those multitude of choices much easier to make the best choice for your beer because you'll be trying to steer the beer towards your concept and that's far easier than sort of wading through and just hoping that a, a, a type of beer materializes um, with your choices and the other thing would be when you're doing your hop additions start at the 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 late end of the boil or dry hop and the um, the um, whirlpool or you know less than 10 minute additions to go and then make up the desired IBUs with your 60 minute edition or first word edition or something like that. If you're interested in you know what each of those hop editions do, uh, there's a video that I've I've done earlier on hot side hop editions. I'll put a link up in the card there. Um, yeah, so that's about that's about all uh, I have to say on that matter. Hopefully you found this. Uh, video helpful and maybe it's given you a few ideas to go and create your own beer maybe there's that weird idea that you've had uh, in the back of your brain about a, a, an idea for a beer that you you want to try hopefully this has given you the uh, confidence or inspiration to go out and have a go give it a brew and then uh, reassess it of course it's really important to once you've brewed it you want to take good notes on brew day in case anything changes or happens um, and then at the end come back and taste it and make notes and about what you might change was it successful and was it maybe too bitter funny you know, the color wasn't right and then you can make iterations in version two and version three um, with practice you'll be able to get pretty close hopefully um, so you'll maybe be able to you know have a shoot from the hip for version one get pretty close and then fine tune it in version two maybe version three so that's it we've created version one of my aussie pale ale hopefully this video has given you the confidence or inspiration to go out and create your own original uh, recipe for you to brew at home maybe it could even be your new house beer so this has been stas from stas brewing with another video brought to you by beer co I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.